Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Kiana and I do a lot of sewing and fashion videos. And today I have a pattern and tutorial for this ruffle tiered dress. The pattern is gonna be the first link down below. And as always, I love to reward my subscribers who have their notification bells turned on. So you can use the code RUFFLEPROM until tomorrow at midnight Eastern time to get 30% off. What I love so much about this pattern is that it's super versatile. So you have this tiered version and this more plain version. So you can choose either one and make it mini, mini or maxi length. I love how versatile it is. Like for example, I'm gonna wear this to a wedding this weekend. I think this would be great for prom or another black tie event. This is an intermediate level pattern and you can find all the supplies and materials needed for this project in that first link down below in the pattern listing description. You can also find all the tools I use throughout this video in the video description. And if you're interested in seeing more of a vlog style video on how I constructed and patterned these dresses, the full journey of how these dresses came to be, I'm gonna link those videos down below because I documented the whole process. Anyways, without further ado, let's just get into the tutorial. All right, so first print out your pattern at 100% scale and make sure to take note of what pages you should print on the first page of your file. Line up your sheets of paper edge to edge without trimming the paper or overlapping and use the lettered and numbered diamonds to help you figure out where everything goes. You can also refer to your instruction pamphlet to see the printing layout for your pattern. Make sure you refer to your instruction pamphlet to figure out what size to cut out. For reference, I'm cutting out a US size zero and then just cut out your pattern on the respective line. Make sure you're paying attention to the pattern details and all of your notches as you are cutting out your fabric. If you're creating style A, AKA the tiered version of this dress, make sure you refer to your instruction pamphlet to figure out what size rectangles to cut out for those tiers. Start off by sewing the princess seams of the front bust pieces right sides together and then press open. Then take your back bust pieces and place them right sides together with the back waist piece Pieces along that under bust seam and so before pressing them open I'm also just going to clip and notch into those curves to make sure everything presses nicely Now I'm going to mark the center of my front waist piece and the center of my front bust piece and place them right sides together along that under bust seam and pin everything in place. Now, because this seam is full of reverse curves, it does make it a little bit more difficult, but if you can get through the seam, this is the most challenging part of this pattern. So it will be smooth sailing after this. A trick that I like to use to help me with reverse curves is to clip into all of those inside curves like I'm doing here before pinning everything into place. This just helps to make everything match up a lot easier. Now you can go ahead and sew the seam and before pressing it, I would clip all of your inside curves and notch all of those outside curves to make sure that it presses nicely. Make sure you're really taking your time with the seam. Like I said, it is a little bit more challenging, but if you can get through this, you will be good to go. Now place your front bodice and your back bodice pieces right sides together along these side seams, sew, and then press open. Now you're gonna repeat all of these steps with your lining bodice. However, for the lining bodice, I'm gonna sew everything wrong sides together because I'm using a sheer skirt shell. If you're using opaque fabric all the way throughout, then you can sew everything right sides together. Now finish the side seam edges of your front and back skirt lining pieces by serging the edges independently. Do this before placing your front and back skirt lining pieces right sides together and sewing and pressing open. Also important to know is you will be sewing these pieces right sides together, even though you sewed the bodice lining wrong sides together. All right, now for the skirt, bodice, and lining, we're gonna do something a little weird when sewing the waistline. Pay attention to the seam allowances. So see how I have the bodice with the right side of the seams facing up, and then the skirt has the seam allowances showing, so the wrong sides of the seams facing up. So I'm taking these two sides of the bodice and the skirt and placing those together, and then pinning and sewing. And then press the waistline seam upwards. Very important, press the seam up. Now take the skirt shell front and back pieces and place them together at the side seams. I'm gonna sew French seams for my skirt shell because I'm using transparent fabric. However, if you're using opaque fabric, you can sew plain seams. If you haven't sewn French seams before, to do this, place your pieces wrong sides together, sew with quarter inch seam allowance, then trim down that seam allowance in half, press the seam allowance to the side or open, and then flip the skirt so it's right sides together, press, and then sew with 
quarter inch seam allowance again. And that's how you sew a French seam. Now, if you're doing the tiered skirt, you're going to want to serge the bottom of your skirt shell, the tops of all of your skirt tiers. And if you're creating the maxi dress, then also serge the bottom of tier two. Now we're going to gather the top of the skirt shell. To do this, sew two rows of basting stitches within the seam allowance of the waistline. So lengthen your stitch all the way, leave long thread tails at the beginning and end of your stitch line and do not back stitch. I also prefer to start my basting stitches about three quarters of an inch away from the center back edge so that it's easier to sew my zipper in the seam later on. Now we're going to gather all of the tops of our skirt tiers. We're also doing exposed ruffles for each of these tiers. So to do this, sew a basting stitch along the top of each tier with half an inch seam allowance, making sure not to backstitch at the beginning or end of that stitch. And then sew a second row of basting stitches with five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now we're gonna gather the tiers. So grab both bobbin threads and start pulling to create the gathers. Gather the top of tier two until it's the same measurement as the hem of tier one. Before sewing tier two to tier one, I would let the skirt sit overnight because of the bias of fabric is going to naturally stretch over time with gravity. So I just like to remark the hem to make it even all the way around before moving to the next step. Overlap tier two onto tier one by one inch and pin into place. Then just top stitch these together by sewing in between the two basting stitches you sewed before. And if you're making the maxi length dress, repeat this for tier three. Now gather the top of your skirt so that it fits into the waistline of the bodice. Place the skirt and the bodice right sides together at the waistline and then pin surge and press that seam upwards. Now we're going to prep for the invisible zipper by surging each of the center back edges of the dress independently. Also do this for the dress lining. Now just install your invisible zipper into the center back seam. So if you don't know how to insert an invisible zipper, this is how I like to do it. Unzip your zipper, flip it to be right sides together on one side and pin it in place. Then I like to baste to this side of the zipper to my dress. Next, I zip up the zipper Mark the waistline and all other horizontal seams with pins on the other side of the zipper tape and then unzip the zipper, flip the other side of the zipper's tape so it's right sides together on the other side of the dress and I use those pins to help me place the zipper so that it matches up perfectly with the other side. Then I baste this side of the zipper in as well. Then I zip the zipper to make sure that everything's lining up correctly before permanently sewing in the zipper. Now just sew the rest of the shell skirt below the zipper right sides together to close that center back seam. Moving on to the straps, place your straps right sides together and sew along the two long edges. Be careful when you're sewing to not stretch and pull these seams. You don't want them to stretch out. After sewing, just trim down those seam allowances in half. I like to press the seams open before flipping them right side out with a loop turner and then giving them a good press. Now take your neckline ruffle piece and serge along one of the long edges. This will be the top of your ruffle. And then you can finish the sides of your ruffle by serging as well, or you can turn and stitch it like me. Now we're going to gather the ruffle. So sew two rows of basting stitches in the seam allowance without back stitching and pull on those bobbin threads to gather the fabric. Fabric. Gather the ruffle to be one inch shorter than that front neckline and place the ruffle right sides together with the shell neckline and center it so that there's half an inch of space on either side. Now place the front of the straps right side down on top of the ruffle and make sure you leave half an inch of space on either side of these straps too because later on when we're sewing the neckline you don't want to accidentally stitch through the strap when you sew down the side. Now also pin the back of the straps to the back bodice where the notch is right sides together. Together. And we are going to stay stitch everything that we pinned in place. So to stay stitch, just throw a basting stitch in the seam allowance and this will just keep everything in place. Now unzip the zipper and take the dress lining and shell and place them right sides together and pin along the neckline and down the center back seam to where the zipper stop is. You're gonna sew from the zipper stop up the center back seam with quarter inch seam allowance then across the entire neckline with half inch seam allowance, and then again down the center back seam on the other side to the zipper stop with quarter inch seam allowance. Now close up the rest of the center back seam of the lining by sewing from the zipper stop down to the hem, right sides together, and then press open. Now finish the neckline by serging and clipping into those corners and curves. Then you can flip the dress right side out 
and give the neckline a press before top stitching about 1 16th of an inch away from the neckline edge for a clean finish. Now to keep the skirt shell and lining in place, tack along the waistline seam. So I'm just going to stitch in the ditch through both the shell and the lining to keep them secure. You can also choose to stitch in the ditch along the entire waistline for maximum security. Now it's time to hem the dress. So make sure you try on the dress before hemming to make sure everything is hitting where you want it to be. Also pay attention to the side seams because gravity will cause the bias of a garment to stretch over time. So if you're creating style A, you can hem your shell skirt by just turning up the hem allowance half an inch twice and top stitching that in place. For the lining for both dresses and the shell for style B, you're going to want to create a rolled hem. So to create a rolled hem, press the hem under one inch, so one eighth of an inch away from the edge, and then trim down that hem allowance to be as small as possible. Then roll the hem under one more time, give it a press, and then top stitch that in place. And then after that, you are done. All right, so that is how you make this ruffle tiered dress. Don't forget that the pattern is the first link down below, and you can use the code RUFFLEPROM until tomorrow at midnight Eastern time to get 30% off. Let me know which dress you liked better, this tiered maxi dress or this lace midi dress. And if you plan on making this, I'd love to hear what your sewing plans are, what materials are you going to use, colors, where you're going in these dresses. I love to know what you guys are creating. And if you post this on Instagram, definitely tag me because I love seeing your creations. Oh, and if you're not following me on Instagram, feel free to follow me on Instagram and TikTok. My handle is Kiana Bonolo. And if you like this video, feel free to also give me a thumbs up because it's the easiest way to support your favorite creators for free. Also, make sure you're subscribed and have those notification bells turned on so that you don't miss out on pattern discounts in the future. But yeah, I think that is everything. So thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.